what do you read into these results? Uh, we, we seem to be seeing the collapse of centrist politics somewhat in, in, in Europe, or at least a, a diminishment of support for those mainstream parties. Well, that's absolutely right. It was, large, it was largely predicted um, because that's what people are wanting at the moment. The centre is not the appeal and the extremes are speaking to people in the way that the middle ground have not. And so you see that in the UK too. Uh, the Brexit Party, that's the new party founded by Nigel Farage, um, is really expected to do incredibly well tonight. On the other side, the new Remain Party, uh, Change UK, not going to do quite so well, but it's fully expected that the Greens will do well here, and also the Liberal Democrats are enjoying a renaissance, and they're all committed Remainers. Indeed, in the United Kingdom, uh, this uh, European election, somewhat of a surprise. Uh, the, the entire country didn't really expect to be taking part, did they? Um, we're, of course, going to be getting the UK results much later in the evening. The UK waits until all of uh, Europe's polling stations have closed. But, Professor Barnard, if we come back to the, uh, the broader European picture, uh, Eurosceptics entering the European Parliament, they've been... Uh, uh, well, uh, threatening, I suppose you could say, to cause chaos in the European Parliament, to, to hamstring processes. Uh, we've even had the Alternative for Germany party saying that they would quite like to see the abolishment of the European Parliament altogether. How much of an impact do you think these Eurosceptics can have? Well, they can certainly hold things up quite a lot. Um, and what we might well see is that in order to get things done, you'll see things done more at an intergovernmental level rather than through the traditional community processes. Because if the European Parliament becomes obstructive, then things have got to be done and you'll have to find ways around that problem. And uh, can these Euro Eurosceptic forces actually block the functioning of the Parliament or other institutions? Well, it depends on their numbers. Um, and it also depends on whether they actually cooperate with each other. Because so far, um, the hard right have not really been very cooperative with each other and therefore haven't sung from the same song sheet. And uh, this has an impact, doesn't it, as well, on the constitution of the, uh, the European Commission. Uh, we will be getting a new set of commissioners uh, later on this year as well. Uh, a more splintered parliament, does that necessarily mean a more splintered commission and perhaps a less well-functioning European Commission? Well, the big question is who's going to be the president and how is it going to be done? Are we going to use the spits and candidate system um, that was used last time? It's not formally enshrined in the, in the treaty, so how's it actually going to be delivered? And of course, there's a number of top jobs that, that have got to be div divvied up across the EU institutions. So not just the Commission, but also President of the European Council and President of the Central Bank. And uh, just based on uh, what's been going on tonight, uh, uh, are you willing to make any predictions about which faction might emerge uh, dominant, perhaps able to uh, put together the, the, uh, the dominant faction in the European Commission? No, being British, I one think that would be audacious. And two, one thing we've also learned over here is never make any predictions. You're bound to be wrong. OK. All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for your thoughts and insights. Catherine Barnard, as I said, Professor of European Law at Trinity College, Cambridge in the United Kingdom.